Welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. In this video, we'll show you our runaway chicken, how we fix the leaks in the pig's water barrel, the progress on our new deck, and how we prepared the turkey for our first Thanksgiving on the farm. The chickens got spooked when we went to feed the rabbits, and four of them flew over the fence. Three immediately hopped back over, but this one here was being stubborn and very hard to catch. The Premier One poultry netting is not effective for containing chickens. And that's why we're going to build a new fence that's 7 feet tall within the next few months after we clear out some more of her property. She must have been curious about the tractor and wanted to check it out. This little hen was not interested in getting caught. Eventually, after chasing her around for about 10 minutes, she went into a small cove under a tree stump and trapped herself. We were able to pick her up and put her back with the rest of the birds. There's a small plastic pond liner that's kept filled with fresh water for the ducks. It's important for duck health to have enough water for them to submerge their faces at a bare minimum. As much as we love having chickens, in our opinion, the ducks are more entertaining to watch. It's time to get out and dry off now. In our last video, we mentioned that our pig's water barrel was leaking and needed to be repaired. It would lose about 10 gallons of water every day. The current hardware wasn't getting a watertight seal and the waterer would freely spin and leak. It got removed and the water was allowed to drain. This is going to be screwed into the bulkhead fitting, but first some Teflon tape was added to prevent water from leaking through the threads. The hole needed to be drilled larger to accommodate the new hardware, but drilling into an existing hole created an ugly mess. There was a small gap that had to be filled in with some food grade silicone sealant before screwing on the nut to hold everything in place. Time to move on to the other leaking waterer. It's definitely best to drill the right size hole to begin with, but it was too late for us. We used a drill bit to grind the edge of the hole until it was large enough for the bulkhead to fit through. Luckily this one didn't require sealant. The pigs were given a water dish while the sealant cured overnight before filling the barrel with water. The pigs still dribble water while drinking, but the barrel is holding water without any leaks. We were having to fill the barrel every day and now we can go 4-5 to five days without filling it. That's what we call a successful improvement. Our pigs absolutely love sunbathing to keep themselves warm during this chilly fall weather. Once they noticed us, they assumed we were going to feed them something delicious and ran to see what we had. They were disappointed that we came empty handed and went into their shelter to relax and await their next meal. We wanted to get some aerial photos with our drone to map out where we're going to put the new fence, but there was a sensor error that prevented us from taking flight. We contacted the manufacturer, they saw that it was a defect, and sent us a packing slip and shipping label to send it out for repair. Here's a clip of the pigs checking out new pasture they were just moved to. And 17 days later, they've almost completely stripped it of all vegetation and tilled the earth. We're renting a mini excavator and skid steer to clear out several areas of our property, so we'll be able to put up semi-permanent electric fencing and create several paddocks that they'll be rotated throughout to give the land a break from the carnage they unleash. When prepping one of the sides for Thanksgiving, we ended up with some Brussels sprout scraps and discovered that the pigs absolutely love them. This may be their new favorite. Speaking of Thanksgiving, we want to share our hack for thawing out a frozen turkey in less than 24 hours. Put the turkey in a water-filled cooler with a sous vide immersion circulator set to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The constant circulation of water around the turkey will thaw it faster than any other method and be health department approved. The water temperature will continue to drop because the turkey and water are fighting to create an equilibrium where they are both the same temperature, resulting in a bird that's ready to cook. Our turkey started to float as it thawed, so we weighed it down with some dishes and used a pot to keep it to one side. Once the turkey was fully thawed the next day, we broke it down into two hindquarters and two boneless skin-on breasts. 
They were seasoned with salt, sugar, and black pepper, topped with fresh rosemary, sage, and thyme, and then vacuum sealed. One package of dark meat and white meat went into the freezer for later. The other breast went into the fridge, and the remaining dark meat went into the circulating water bath held at 155 degrees Fahrenheit overnight. The turkey brines as it cooks and is literally impossible to overcook using this method, so you end up with the most juicy, tender, and flavorful turkey you've ever had. Thanksgiving morning, the temperature is dropped to 145 degrees and the breast goes into the water bath. The dark meat is fully cooked at this point and is kept warm while the white meat cooks. The breasts will take about 4-6 to six hours depending on the size, but it can go as long as 24 hours if necessary. This delicious stock was made of the roasted bones of the turkey, simmered all night and day while the meat cooked sous vide. About 15 minutes before dinner time, the turkey was removed from the bags, patted dry, the skin was coated in rendered turkey fat from the stock and placed under the broiler until it was golden brown and crispy. Doesn't that look amazing? We guarantee it was the most delicious turkey ever. Check out the link in the video description below if you're interested in getting a similar setup and feel free to comment with any questions. The week before Thanksgiving, we got another delivery of supplies for our new deck. Some of the lumber was not in the best shape, but that's to be expected during a global pandemic with insane supply issues. Three full days of work the week of Thanksgiving yielded a strong frame for the upper portion of the deck. We're going to have an area that's 20 feet by 12 feet completely screened in with a roof that will lead out to an open area that's 12 feet by 10 feet. This should give us ample space for outdoor cooking, dining, and entertaining. The workers should be completely finished in another three to four working days. The steps are completed to give us access to the deck from the side of the house. We're very happy with how it's looking and can't wait to get our outdoor furniture and grills set up for some amazing meals with family and friends. Let us know what you think of our deck so far. Seems pretty well built to us. The blue spruce seedlings are continuing to thrive during the science experiment to determine the best growing medium. Pure dirt from outside without any soil amendments is still the clear winner so far. We'll continue to share the progress of these trees for several years until they're ready to sell as Christmas trees. Thank you so much for watching, and we really appreciate you sticking around till the end of this video. We'll see you next time!